Right, the second of the, uh, the two uh, readings of W.B. Yeats's poems by Cecil Day-Lewis, who was the, fa the father of uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, the actor, and the grandfather of uh, Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter. And, uh, and readings also by Mary O'Farrell, a, a very well-known Irish actress of her day. I have heard the hysterical women say they are sick of the parish and fiddle bow of poets that are always gay. For everybody knows, or else should know, that if nothing drastic is done, aeroplane and zeppelin will come out, pitch like King Billy, bomb balls in, until the town lies beaten flat. All perform their tragic play. There struts Hamlet, there is Lear. That's Ophelia, that Cordelia. Yet they, should the last scene be there, the great stage curtain about to drop, if worthy of their prominent part in the play, do not break up their lines to weep. They know that Hamlet and Lear are gay, gaiety transfiguring all their dread. All men have aimed at, found and lost, blackout, Heaven blazing into the head, tragedy wrought to its uttermost. Though Hamlet rambles and Lear rages, and all the drop scenes drop at once upon a hundred thousand stages, it cannot grow by an inch or an ounce. On their own feet they came, or on shipboard, camelback, horseback, assback, muleback, old civilization put to the sword. Then they and their wisdom went to wreck. No handiwork of Callimachus, who handled marble as if it were bronze, made draperies that seemed to rise when sea wind swept the corner, stand. His long lamp chimney, shaped like the stem of a slender palm, stood but a day. All things fall and are built again, and those that build them again are gay. Two Chinamen, behind them a third, are carved in lapis lazuli. Over them flies a long-legged bird, a symbol of longevity. The third, doubtless a serving man, carries a musical instrument. Every discoloration of a stone, every accidental crack or dent seems a watercourse or an avalanche, or lock this slope where it still snows, though doubtless plum or cherry branch sweetens the little halfway house those Chinamen climb towards. And I delight to imagine them seated there. There, on the mountain and the sky, on all the tragic scene, they stare. One asks for mournful melodies. Accomplished fingers begin to play. Their eyes, mid many wrinkles, their eyes, their ancient glittering eyes, are gay. Why should I seek for love or study? It is of God and passes human wit. I study hatred with great diligence, for that's a passion in my own control. A sort of besom that can clear the soul of everything that is not mind or sense. Why do I hate man, woman, or event? That is a light my jealous soul has sent. From terror and deception free, it can discover impurities, can show at last how soul may walk when all such things are past. How soul could walk before such things began. Then my delivered soul herself shall learn a darker knowledge and in hatred turn from every thought of God mankind has had. Thought is a garment and the soul's a bride that cannot in that trash and tinsel hide. Hatred of God may bring the soul to God. At stroke of midnight, soul cannot endure a bodily or mental furniture. 
What can she take until her master gives? Where can she look until he makes the show? What can she know until he bid her know? How can she live till in her blood he lives? Right, side two of this lovely Columbia record. It's the second of the two uh, records I have of uh, readings by Yeats uh, from uh, the incredible Cecil Day Lewis, who was a, a very accomplished poet and translator of, uh, of uh, Latin, etc., and prolific uh, uh, recordist of, uh, of other people's poems. And Mary O'Farrell, uh, accomplished Irish actress, and uh, reading uh, Sailing to Byzantium and Byzantium. That is no country for old men, the young in one another's arms, birds in the trees, those dying generations at their song, the salmon falls, the mackerel crowded seas, fish, flesh or fowl, commend all summer long whatever is begotten, born and died. Caught in that sensual music, all neglect monuments of unaging intellect. An aged man is but a paltry thing, a tattered coat upon a stick, unless soul clap its hands and sing, and louder sing for every tatter in its mortal dress. Nor is there singing school but studying monuments of its own magnificence. And therefore I have sailed the seas and come to the holy city of Byzantium. O oh, sages, standing in God's holy fire as in the gold mosaic of a wall, come from the holy fire, turn in a gyre, and be the singing masters of my soul. Consume my heart away, sick with desire, and fasten to a dying animal it knows not what it is and gather me into the artifice of eternity. Once out of nature, I shall never take my bodily form from any natural thing, but such a form as Grecian goldsmiths make of hammered gold and gold enamelling to keep a drowsy emperor awake or set upon a golden bow to sing to lords and ladies of Byzantium of what is past, or passing, or to come. The unpurged images of day recede, the emperor's drunken soldiery are abed, Night resonance recedes, night walker's song after great cathedral gong. A starlit or a moonlit dome disdains all that man is, all mere complexities, the fury and the mire of human veins. Before me floats an image, man or shade, shade more than man, more image than a shade. For Hades, bobbing, bound in mummy cloth, may unwind the winding path. A mouth that has no moisture and no breath, breathless mouths may summon. I hail the superhuman. I call it death in life and life in death. Miracle, bird or golden handiwork, more miracle than bird or handiwork, planted on the starlit golden bough, can like the cocks of Hades crow, or by the moon embittered, scorn aloud in glory of changeless metal, common bird or petal, and all complexities of mire or blood. At midnight on the Emperor's pavement flit, flames that no faggot feeds, nor steel has lit, nor storm disturbs, flames begotten of flame, where blood begotten spirits come, and all complexities of fury leave, dying into a dance, an agony of trance, an agony of flame that cannot singe a sleeve. 
A straddle on the dolphin's mire and blood. Spirit after spirit, the smithies break the flood. The golden smithies of the emperor. Marbles of the dancing floor break bitter furies of complexity. Those images that yet fresh images beget. That dolphin torn, that gown tormented sea.